Hello and welcome back to my channel, The Future Empress. My name is Anna and today I'm gonna do the Stranger Things book tag. So this tag was created by Sarah Sunbeams on YouTube. This is just a tag based on Stranger Things in honor of the Christmas lights, which is a huge future in the first season. I decorated myself with Christmas lights. The first prompt is epic intro. The opening sequence of Stranger Things is amazing and really grabs your attention. Name a book that grabbed your attention from the first page. And the book I chose for that is A Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. Honestly, it was legit at the first page. It got me so intrigued in the story. I will read it out for you. So at page one, chapter one, at the end of the first paragraph, it says, if you get anything out of this, ideally it won't be you being more or less on one side or the other, but simply understanding that I am, or at least I was, human. And that just grabbed my attention so much more. I know this is a sci-fi book, however, I've heard that it's very contemporary in how it's written and what is happening because it's not a high sci-fi world, however, that first page and that ending of that particular paragraph just had me curious is what the fuck is gonna happen to her. So yeah, this is my choice for an epic intro because honestly it fits so well into that category. The next prompt is Dungeons and Dragons. Name a fantasy world you would like to experience yourself. And this was actually a hard one because usually fantasy worlds are so gruesome and you have to survive kind of world that you don't want to experience it yourself because it seems so dangerous. However, I think that I would like to experience the world of Graceling by Kristin Cashore. This is a world where if you're born with two colored eyes, you have some sort of ability. People are kind of afraid of these kind of people, especially the ones that have a specific color that is used for fighting or is frowned upon like mind reading and stuff like that. Usually those get killed, I think, if I remember correctly. However, I just feel like this would be such an interesting world to be in because it's giving me Game of Thrones kind of esque vibes of the world itself. However, without all the gruesome parts, there's gruesome parts, but more soft and with abilities that a lot of the population actually have because you can even have a grace in baking. You don't have to have a power in fighting or something, you can have a grace in baking or potion making. There's all the possibilities of some kind of grace and I wouldn't mind trying to experience this world and being a graceling myself. The third prompt is squad goals. When Eleven met Mike, Dustin and Lucas, it was mostly perfect team. Name your favorite book is group of friends. So for this one, it's one of my recent reads and that is The Rise of Kyoshi by F.T. Yi. I think this goes under one of those categories that is called found family. They don't choose to be friends with each other, but they end up being some kind of family group because they end up together in different circumstances. Not everyone in this group is actually glad to be in this group but at the end of the book you feel like they grew close together and they are like a found family now and I just love the dynamic between all of the people like Kyoshi and Ranji and the Flying Oprah group. I love the dynamic between everyone and especially especially the dynamic between Kyoshi and Tauji, I think that's how you pronounce it. The next prompt is ABCs and Christmas lights. Joyce Byers goes mad with grief after Will goes missing. Name your favorite mentally unhinged character. I don't have a favorite kind of mentally unhinged character that isn't evil, so I just wanted to go with the one that is actually my favorite mentally unhinged character all time, because I feel like you can justify a lot of mentally unhinged characters, especially Joyce. I don't feel like she's mentally unhinged. She's just a desperate mom that wants to f find her son again. But my answer for this is gonna be Sebastian from The Mortal Instruments. He is the... oh, that might be a spoiler. He is on the cover of this last book, The City of Heavenly Fire. And I just feel like this is such a great villain. 
especially because you can see how mentally unhinged he is, how mentally disturbing this kid is. He is pure evil. However, in the ending of this book, something happens and it's open your eyes to him as a character in the whole. And you just feel like this is one of the best villains Cassandra Clare has ever written and will ever write, hands down. Then we have the upside down. Name a book that was the opposite of what you expected. So I technically don't have a lot of expectations when I go into a book. I fairly keep it very low because I don't want to be disappointed or I don't want to think something is gonna happen and then it turns out not being it. So I try to keep my expectations as low as I can. So for this one it was kind of hard to choose a book. However, I think I found one and that is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is adult romance and it's like a romance between the first son of America and a prince of the British royal family. I don't know why, but I didn't expect to be a lot of politics in this, especially a lot of American politics. I didn't expect that, but there is. There is a lot of politics and that's one of many reasons why I love this book. It just set such a good plot other than just the romance to the book and I really enjoyed it and... It was unexpected, to be honest. Also, it was unexpected for me to actually love politics in a book, so... The sixth prompt is Mad Scientist. Dr. Brenner likes to get freaky with humanity. Name the freakiest dystopian government you can think of. I love the dystopians and I feel like a lot of dystopians, the government isn't a main point. However, that is actually the concept of a dystopian, like the biggest two main dystopians, which is the Hunger Games and Divergent. However, the government doesn't come in the Divergent as much as the Hunger Games by Susan Collins. So I am gonna choose The Hunger Games because I feel like the government in this is so obviously portrayed and described and you can't help but think how the fuck does these kind of people actually think this is okay? This is like an OG dystopian novel. However, I still think this is like one of the freakiest dystopian governments that I've read about. Usually the first books in dystopians, they're more about the world and not about the government itself. It always comes later, like in The Divergent. However, in The Hunger Games, I feel like from book one, you know what kind of government you're dealing with and it's sick and I love it. The seventh prompt is Demogorgon. Name is scary book is creature that you would not want to come through your walls. So for this one I had to think a bit because there's not a lot of creatures that I feel like is scary. I usually don't get that scared and I was thinking about Faye but I feel like that is just like a different kind of race and they're scary yes but they're like not monsters in a sense because they still have human emotions. So I had to think a bit more and then I thought of the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. This is the Queen of Shadows. I'm not sure in which book they appear but I'm talking about the Ilkin which is created from pure evil and I would not want them to crawl through my walls because one they would probably suck my soul out like the Dementors in Harry Potter. Either it's gonna be the Ilkins from the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas or it's gonna be the Dementors in Harry Potter. I don't know because I'm not scared, but I would not appreciate it if they crawled out of my walls. Like, no thank you. The last prompt is cliffhanger ending. Name a book that left you wanting more. I was looking at my bookshelves and wondering, hmm, what is a book that left me wanting more? If I thought about the books that I've read recently, I can only think of two books that had a very cliffhanger ending that made me want to have the sequel right now in my hands. However, when I looked over my bookshelves, I saw Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard and I thought back to when I first read this book back in 2016 or 17. When was it published? Because I remember pre-ordering this. 2016. I remember pre-ordering this because Red Queen had re left me so interested in the world. And I remember, it's four years now, and I still remember when I finished this book, I immediately wanted book three. On the cover of this one, it says Kneel or Bleed. And the ending, it's such a cliffhanger. So iconic cliffhanger to be honest and I honestly I can't express what I felt at that moment when I finished the book but I just knew that I needed the third book right now at this second that I finished and it was torture 
waiting for book three to come out to find out what happened. It was nice actually thinking about how much I felt when reading this series. I just remembered why I love this series so much. It's been a while since it ended now, so I haven't been thinking about it a lot. I love that this tag made me remember how much I appreciate the Red Queen series. So that's it for this tag. I hope you enjoyed watching and see you next time. Bye! to get off get this off what did i do oh my god